I'm Chuck Lieber. I'm not a security person. <laughs> Just wanted to put that out there right up front. Um, if there's something I say that that looks like complete BS, you know, you don't have to say I'm calling you out. You can say, you know, maybe you don't understand this, and I won't take that personally. Um, but I, I am. Uh, I've been in uh, NFS community for 20 years. I'm a co-maintainer of the Linux NFS server, as well as the author of several uh, NFS-related uh, RFCs. Um, so that's sort of my area of expertise, and it gives you a sense of where I'm coming from with this talk. Um, and I want to thank James and the program committee for inviting me here to talk. Um, um, so I want to start with the sort of simplified abstract use case that my employer is mostly interested in uh, in terms of IMA. It's the sort of uh, attestation of end-to-end uh, -end attestation of uh, uh, executables. So basic, the basic model is that a software vendor generates uh, a signed um, Mac or, or checksum of, of an executable it it's wants to distribute and uh, it publishes uh, the application, its public key, and of course the checksum. And then uh, end users are protected um, on systems that have these, these features. I'm just sort of going over this really quickly. I'm sure most of you know, understand how this works. But um, it's got th three items. Um, a way to store um, the uh, public keys of the software vendors, a, a, a security module or a security service that, that uh, is able to actual, actually perform the measurement of, of executables before they're used, and then a policy for handling appraisal failures. So the customer installs uh, the application, and it stores the signed checksum um, close to the application, and then whenever it's it's opened or used, of course the uh, the security service is able to uh, measure that application and uh, uh, verify the, the the checksum and the the signature on it. So that's how it works in the local case. When of course the file system is local to the to the user who is. Um, running the, the, the executable, but now what happens when uh, the file storage is remote, as in a network file system? And I'm not talking about just NFS here. It could be uh, Ceph, it could be uh, uh, an SMB storage service, um, anything that, that, that uh, <clears throat> allows access to files over a, over a network uh, is a possibility here. Um, so the first thing to note is, is we're talking about two separate systems, the server and the client, the server being the, the storage server and the client being the, the, the place where the, the application is running are actually two separate systems. Um, they're not the same system as they are in the local case. Um, and the second thing to note is that the greatest attack surface appears when the file con is, content is in transit. Um, that's, that's, a, that's an exposure that local storage, the local storage use case doesn't have. And as you may be familiar with some types of NFS storage, uh, the, the server, the storage server, doesn't have an execution environment, which means the programs don't run there. They they all run on the storage on the on the clients. Um, we're also talking about uh, situations where you might have different operating systems running on the client than you do on the storage server. You might have Solaris running on the on the storage server on the NFS server, and you might have Linux running on the on the uh, um, clients where the applications are running. Um, so we have to be sensitive about um, the server not, for example, being able to interpret uh, um, IMA metadata. Or in fact, they might not be able to understand uh, Linux style extended attributes. So we can't just say, well, look in this extended attribute. Maybe, for example, ZFS on Solaris I mean, where do you where do you put the IMA 
the, the security.ima extended attribute on, in a file system like that doesn't support extended attributes. So we have the, also have the, the, the quandary of uh, how, how the uh, storage server and how the NFS clients might represent users. It's also the case that um, the, the server might have a different policy than the client does when it, turns, when it comes to uh, interpreting uh, IMA um, um, attestation failures. The server might just, for example, it might just audit the failure. Or it might say, I'm sorry, clients, you can't access this file because uh, this is failing my policy. Um, Today, what that looks like to, to clients, if the server decides that the, the client is not allowed access, it looks like suddenly the, the client uh, gets uh, e-access. Um, and the user might be, well, I didn't change the access control on this file, why am I getting this? Um, it really, the, the clients don't have any visibility into that. So, that kind of gives you the context for the, for the NFS extension that, that I would like to propose. Um, it has to deal with all these situations, um, uh, especially troublesome is the, the fact that your, your storage server might not be running the same, might not be running Linux. So it might not have any idea what IMA metadata is. So um, the idea here is um, you can take any NFS server, uh, Solaris, uh, NetApp, uh, whatever, Dell EMC, and uh, enable it to store IMA metadata so that executables you store there, you install there, can be um, uh, measured and attested on clients, on NFS clients that ac access them. The whole idea here is to extend the, the protection of, of IMA from the NFS server all the way to end users on NFS clients. In other words, to bring the, the uh, protection as close to end use as possible. So on Linux, uh, IMA metadata is stored in the security.imax header. Um, and all I've done is I've added a new um, attribute to NFS v4 called fatter4 IMA um, that's stored with set adder. Um, it's retrieved with get adder. And uh, the NFS servers can store this, uh, the, the content of this attribute any way they like. If they're Linux, they can store them in the security.ima extended attribute. If they're NetApp, they can put them in a database. If they're Solaris, they can put them in a named attribute. They can do whatever they need to do. Um, but the most important part of this is that the NFS protocol and NFS implementations don't interpret. They don't parse this metadata. It's just a blob of data that's moved. It's basically just treated the same way as file content. So this gives us some interesting features. Um, NFS has integrity protection in transit using Kerberos. Um, that's, of course, optional. Um, but in fact, integrity protection isn't necessary when you have IMA metadata, because the, the IMA metadata has a, has a signature on it. It's cryptographically protected. When the client gets both the, the file content and the IMA metadata, it can do its own assessment of the, of the uh, file content and a corruption of, of either the metadata or the file content can be detected by the, the uh, uh, IMA security service on the client. So this, this detects both um, corruption of the data in transit. It also protects it when it's uh, at rest on the server. Um, there are some things that I'm leaving out of the uh, proposal um, to make it a little uh, more likely that it will be implemented and, and uh, merged into Linux. Um, not doing secure boot via NFS boot, NFS root. Um, and uh, more importantly, I'm not um, currently proposing su to support uh, attribute protection via uh, EVM. Um, there are some strong reasons not to do it. Um, one reason is that NFS v4 ACLs don't look like POSIX cycles, and so um, the EVM 
checksum might be computed from POSIX ACLs and, and other uh, types of metadata from on the, on the uh, uh, content generation end, but the, the, uh, the client, NFS clients are not going to be able to see those uh, uh, POSIX ACLs. They'll see NFS v4 ACLs, and those won't look the same. So the checksum uh, won't, won't work at that point. So I do have a prototype of this. Uh, the slide kind of details exactly how, how, how it's implemented. Um, when uh, user space tries to, uh, on the client, tries to get to security.ima ex extended attribute, it's uh, translated into the get adder of the fatter4 IMA uh, or set adder of that attribute and uh, sent to the server. And the, the Linux NFS server does the opposite translation. Um, I also have written uh, a, a, a NFS v4 uh, extension uh, specification. Um, it's been in front of the working group for about a year. Um, it is a working group document now, so it is something that uh, the working group is interested in making sure is published as, a, as an RFC. Um, but there are certain issues that are, are uh, still a challenge. One is that uh, Linux IMA doesn't have a, a, an official published specification. It, um, so there are some questions about how interoperable is it to store IMA metadata uh, in the server and will, uh, will all clients be guaranteed to recognize the, the contents of the IMA metadata? Um, we don't have like a, a separate little field that says this is type seven IMA metadata or whatever. Um, it's expected that the, the IMA security services or module on the, on the clients are, are able to recognize all of the relevant types of IMA metadata there are and interpret them and, and do something with them. Um, NFS doesn't play any part of that. Um, I think I've gotten that document and the working group to a point where they've accepted that. Um, the other issue that still remains a challenge is understanding how to authorize modification of IMA metadata on the server. On the client, uh, CAP sysadmin is required to do that, but we don't have the same, we don't have capabilities at all in the NFS protocol, so we can't really rely on that. Um, the IETF is probably going to require us to make some kind of statement about how secure um, the ability to modify IMA metadata needs to be on the server. So I, that's still a question mark for me, and if anybody has any good ideas, I'm, I'm very open to hearing them. Uh, it seems to me that we really don't need to, to protect it that much because obviously when the, when the client gets both of these things, uh, the worst that can happen if they're corrupted is uh, by a malicious actor is that uh, there's a denial of service. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in other people's opinions about how that will work. Um, so we have a prototype, we have a protocol specification. How do we know when it's done? Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure how to answer that question. Uh, maybe you all have some interesting ideas about that. Um, I've got the prototype implementation. It looks pretty clean. Um, I haven't submitted for review yet, um, but I think you know, now that we have a, a, a specification document, that's usually all that's required. Uh, to get it merged, and so I think we're at a point where um, it's probably ready for review. Um, through, the, through this whole thing, I've been worried about uh, the performance of this, but as I understand it, uh, actual con file content measurement is done once and then cached, and so maybe, maybe that's not gonna be an issue. Um, the IMA offload case is kind of interesting. That's where the, the NFS server uh, handles IMA and the client just trusts the server to get it right. Um, I'm not sure if that's interesting to folks or whether that's something that should definitely be uh, uh, forbidden. Um, so I'm interested in, in any opinions there. Um, so you can find the, the protocol specification at the top URL and you can find the Linux uh, server and client prototype at the bottom URL if you're, if you're curious about trying this out. Um, and before I uh, get some, to questions, um, I just wanted to say that there is a lot more work being done in the security area in NFS. 
and I'm interested to know if if um, I put a, an, a secure NFS buff on the on the flip chart, if anybody would be interested in attending, how, how many people would be interested in coming? Two. Nah, that's good enough. Three? All right. I'll do that then. Okay, any questions? If I understand correctly, this does require server-side modification. So if I have a NetApp, I'm waiting on NetApp to implement this protocol spec? That's correct. Uh, have you, I, I guess I don't know much about the problem space, but how would this compare to something like FS Verity, where you're storing the actual metadata as normal files, so you can use a normal POSIX file system, whatever that might look like, to store your met integrity metadata? Uh, I understand that the FS Meta Verity folks are looking at integrating with IMA, but I don't know what the status of that is. You can ask the author. <laughs> uh, it's actually prob probably better to call me the original instigator. Uh, oh. Eric Biggers has actually done most of the coding work uh, for FS Verity. Uh, so let's answer in reverse order. We are planning on integrating with IMA in so far as when you open an FS Verity protected file, the Merkle tree hash will be sent to IMA as if it were a new checksum uh, of the file. Uh, and the protection properties are slightly different than a traditional IMA verification where you drag the entire file into memory, um, cache it, uh, do the checksum, and then never check the checksum ever again. With FS Verity, you check the checksum every single time a page is pulled in, um, and it's as you go as opposed to the whole file. So there are differences in performance and security guarantees, and it will be up to the system builder uh, or administrator to decide what's appropriate for their use case. With respect to NFS, uh, it's actually not in the file, per se, because the way FS Verity works is that um, there is, as an implementation detail for local disk file systems, we place the Merkle tree at the end of the file after the metadata. However, user space, if they call stat on the file and get iSize, they get the real file, and the um, Merkle tree is effectively hidden um, from user space. Um, so an obvious way of implementing this for NFS v4 might be as a stream type object, which I guess is called uh, named, uh, was it named attributes? Yes. Um, essentially, it's an alternate file stream uh, because the Merkle tree is generally way bigger than what you can put in an extended attribute. Um, so it would be possible to support FS Verity for uh, NFS v4 uh, with minimal changes to the NFS protocol, assuming the server side supported uh, named attributes. Uh, someone is going to have to do the work. Uh, if there's anyone interested in implementing that because they have a use case where that would be useful, um, you should probably talk to me or Chuck because I'd love to see it, but I don't have a use case or time to implement it myself. Yeah, and uh, as an aside, um, I believe Solaris implements named attributes uh, in the client and server, but I don't think anybody else ever did. I know Linux does not. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you. <laughs>